Food Fight is a computer-animated monstrosity that I found sometime in 2016 after googling the worst movies on Amazon Prime. Where most of the films I found were bootleg ripoffs of real movies, this seemed to be an original production, and also it starred Charlie Sheen, and Eva Longoria, and Jerry Stiller, and Hilary Duff. Why was this movie so unknown if all of these famous names were in it? Shouldn't there have been more promotion if it was such an A-list cast? Well, apparently it was a wild fucking ride. I'm not going to go too far into the history of this movie, simply because the New York Times put out a really good article in 2013 that really got all the details of it and was quite scathing, etc. So I would read that for the skinny of it, but here are some important facts and figures to take away from the production of this movie. Uh, number one fact is that on a budget of between 45 and 65 million dollars, this movie made less than 74,000 in the box office. If you divide $73,706 by either one of those numbers, you get around 0.1%. It made about 0.1% of its budget. How did they pay Eva Longoria? Uh, fact number two, that is a lot of production companies. That is a suspicious number of production companies. And if you delve into that New York Times article, you will see that, yes, that is due to them passing this movie back and forth like a hot potato because it was so bad. Okay, fact number three, I'm just going to read straight off the Wikipedia page. Uh, apparently, in 2003-2002, Kazanoff, Larry Kazanoff, creator of this film, reported that hard drives containing most unfinished assets from the film had been stolen in what he called an act of industrial espionage and, quote, an incredibly complex crime. Based on the fact that a movie scheduled to come out in 2003 came out in 2012 and mysteriously couldn't come out initially in 2003 because apparently all the files were stolen and they had to completely start over, I'd wager that perhaps the delay had more to do with visionary Larry Kazanoff producing an animated feature with absolutely no experience in producing an animated feature. Okay, anyways, that's too many of my breathing minutes spent worrying about the context of this film and trying to portray it. Let's get started talking about the film itself. So we open on a store opening and basically it seems like it's the kind of Toy Story thing where the food comes alive at night, just like the toys come alive at night, but it's not food. It's like icon mascots of various food companies and they come alive at night and they have a little town and they all live together and their function or role almost completely unknown. They have no purpose other than to live and occasionally drink and, and commit stuff. crimes. Basically, it's worthless and they all look horrible. Please look at these characters. Also keep in mind, there's like a shit ton of actual food mascots, which they tried to make a thing. So heavy, super obvious, purposeful product placement. Real quick for the moment, I'm gonna go over characters and plot not bringing up how fucking awful they look. It would take too long to mention the details of why each and every one of these is visually offensive to me. The main character's name is Dex Dogtective. I wonder what he looks like. So he's an anthropomorphic dog, and so of course his girlfriend has to be an anthropomorphic cat, right? Uh, no, wrong. It's a, just a lady, and she's got a cat ears, so basically she's a simple furry, and her name is Sunshine Goodness. She sells raisins. I don't know what Dex Dog Detective's food is. Anyway, they've got a super sexual relationship and she almost continually calls him big guy, tough guy, really seconds from daddy at any given point. Uh, he tickles her at one point. It's really uncomfortable, quite honestly. Uh, it's too much and she uses sex voice and he's like a grown man and she's like a little girl. So that's really a blast to watch. Also, if we're gonna get into it. I know that all the icons are supposed to look different, but this kind of goes beyond the normal animation trend where the male character will look like a full animal and the female version will have like boobs and butt to make sure you know she's sexy. No, in this one, they just had the female one not be another kind of animal. She's just a regular person basically with just enough animal feature to be similar to him. Also, we gotta talk about the world building of Larry Kazanov here. In the world he has created, there are two types of women. You've got a sexy Barbie doll looking humanoid woman, and then you have this. This movie does not pass the Bechdel test, given every woman with significant lines is either in love with Dex Dog Detective or tries to fuck him. 
back to the characters of this movie. So, Dex Detective's best friend is named Daredevil Dan, who is a chocolate squirrel. Again, I don't know what brand that is, but that's something. Uh, and he's the squirrel pilot of a plane, but he cannot fly the plane, so I don't know why he's doing it all the time. He's considered the story's comic relief, but most of that comes in the form of sexual aggression, whether he's catcalling women or being catcalled himself. Uh, the chocolate thing obviously then turns into a bunch of stuff about him being chocolate because he's black and then he gets like the gay vampire is like I want you chocolate man it's really uncomfortable and I feel bad for Wayne Brady who had to voice this character there's like a hundred other characters that I care absolutely zero about but I would be doing this video a disservice if I were to ignore certain individuals that I think are very special in how terrible they are. We have an aggressive gay vampire who is into Daredevil Dan because he's made of chocolate. We have the little frog that farts. We have the robot that is clearly a robot passing as a human that is the evil Brand X guy. We have this horrible kinky man. He's all about, uh, yeah, just don't ever watch this movie. We have this guy. We have this bird. And last but not least, we have Cheezle. Cheezle is a weasel, and I don't know what his food is either. All I know is that he's greasy, has the voice of Dr. Doofenshmirtz from Phineas and Ferb, and is in general terrible. Uh, he stretches and he dies three times in the movie. He's soaking he wet. looks soaking wet. Okay, anyways, entire plot of the movie, he has a girlfriend and wants to get married, but then they're gonna, he's gonna propose, but then she mysteriously disappears because his best friend plane crashes and she goes to help him, but then she doesn't appear there and she's gone for six months. And then at the end of that six month period, he's still depressed and stuff, uh, living it up, trying to get by, solve crimes, etc. A new criminal comes to town. He deals with it in weird and poorly animated ways. Uh, apparently that criminal is, has a sensual smell to her and it is because she has stolen his girlfriend's essence so his girlfriend's still fine she just kept in a back room somewhere to give her raisins out and uh basically the the bad lady is a nazi also and believe it or not the food fights wow but all the fights are just the same four shots put in different sequences over and over any crowd has the same seven characters it's done really lazily so it's not even worth watching the rest of the movie. I'm so tired.